This hour has 22 minutes is a satirical examination of daily events. Some viewers may not share this sense of humor. Hockey is back. All figure skaters, please clear the rink. National Hockey League players and owners are putting the finishing touches on their plans to begin the 1995 season. After a three-month lockout, here are some of the key conditions agreed to by both sides. In future, whenever a rookie touches the puck, his salary will be flashed on the scoreboard. And when a player reaches the age of 32, he will go back to square one in the organization, where his duties will include general rink maintenance. Some players may not be in shape for the 48-game season. Here we see a vacationing NHL player on the left and his agent on the right. The season may be starting late, but the real winners of the 1995 season have already been determined. They are, of course, the Sharks. Not the hockey team from San Jose, but rather the legal team from Birkenstein, Birkenstein and Chabanian. <laughs> Vladimir Zirinovsky, he says that someday he will own and operate Russia, Iran, Turkey, Afghanistan, and Alaska. But becoming a dictator can be fairly expensive. So to raise some extra cash for his campaign, Zirinovsky has signed a modeling contract with New York designer Calvin Klein. The ad, pictured here, is expected to raise an enormous amount of money for the would-be tyrant and loads of publicity for Klein. The ad will run in next month's issue of Soldier of Fortune. Dilex, Canada's largest clothing retailer, is seeking court protection from its creditors and plans to shut up to 200 of its stores. Dilex Holdings includes such well-known stores as Fairweather, Tip Top Tailors, The Byway, and Thrifties. The company takes the name Dilex from its motto, which is damn your lousy excuses. Part of the restructuring plan will include an immediate name change from Dilex to Watsu. We're all tits up, so shag you. Last week, the Canadian dollar took a nosedive to a new nine-year low. While this is bad news for Canadian vacationers and cross-border shoppers, it was excellent news for Canadian exporters. Some of the big Canadian winners were leather goods manufacturers who saw an unprecedented rise in exports of Canadian shoes. In Taiwan, bitter fighting broke out as the imported shoes were snapped up as soon as they arrived and only one much coveted Canadian shoe was left. You know, I can understand where emotions would run high because Really, you can't beat a Canadian shoe or boot for ice and snow. It is unheard of in Muslim countries for a public official to discuss human sexuality. However, Zayn al-Abin Abdul Qadir, head of the Islamic Center in Malaysia, has done just that. In an uncharacteristically candid statement, Mr. Qadir has recommended that husbands and wives bathe together. For a response, we go now to Ahmed and Julifina Kababi, who are struggling with this new Muslim ordinance. Ahmed, you look happy. Yeah, well, I suppose I am. I'm in the tub with her. That's a major accomplishment. I'm only in the tub because the head of the Islamic Center said it can spark up a marriage. Yeah, well, why don't you take off your coat and stay a while, Julifina? Oh, yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Perhaps you need to help set the mood. Light some candles, turn on some music. Yes, exactly. Why don't you turn on the tape deck there, Jufli? Oh, yeah, you had to mention music. He wants to have on that awful Muslim music all the time, and no offense, right? I don't want to have to go away like Salami Rusty, right? But Muslim music sucks. Do you hear that? Do you hear that, Frank? Now, looking at us now, you would never say that we had it all, Frank. We were like the Islamic bogey and Bacall. All I wanted, Frank, was to try to get back what we once had. That's all. Ahmed? Why? Ahmed, why don't you just tell her? All right. Jufalina? What? I love you. All right, then. Maybe I'll take off the mitts. <laughs> I'm mad 
Vigilante here at the ice rink with Elvis Stoiko. And yes, indeed, it does seem that he has quite a sizable behind. <laughs> when did you start training to be a world champion? Oh, geez, to be a world champion? Well, I started skating when I was five, and I guess uh, really training, I guess, when I was about 14, 13, 14. Is it too late for me? Never. It's never too late. I mean, me and you, you know, with a small man like you, like a big woman like me. Oh, uh, I'm not that small. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Elvis. Go, go lie down. I think he liked me. I think it was the outfit. Dakey Dunn. Like Camus, I've often asked myself, what is the most aesthetically satisfying form of suicide? Marriage in a 40-hour week or a revolver? <laughs> Ironically enough, neither option is at this time open to me. The wife and the paycheck being long gone, and who can afford on the pogey the revolver? So, in a sense, I feel I've moved beyond Camus into a different if not higher plane of existence. The new girlfriend works dispatch down to the stand. She's in the Wicca and goddess worshiping. I'm trying to be open to that, you know. She said we all started out female, and I don't mind that. And my color blindness, my dyslexia, and my increased need to down an ocean of liquor before I set off on even the smallest journey of self-discovery are the direct result of the loss of the bottom part of my second X chromosome, leaving me with a head full of testosterone, one tragically crippled X chromosome, or what most people simply call the male Y chromosome, and a frenzied need to dominate and brutalize. Okay, I admit, I do have the brain of a crocodile. I'm mostly in the feeding, fighting, and, well, you knows the other one. And yes, as a younger man, I did occasionally boast about my ability to reach orgasm in just under 90 seconds. But we live and learn. And I don't care, though, how open-minded, how new age, or how sensitive I become, I will never, never be capable of understanding the who's on top question as a gender parity issue. <laughs> so, reporting here from the front lines and seeming to have lost quite badly the battle of the sexes, I might yet go on to win the gender war. <laughs> For almost two decades, a full-time civil servant in Ottawa has climbed the stairs of the Peace Tower and played the Carolyn Bells for 15 minutes a day. Now, due to a major restoration project, the Bells will remain silent for at least two years. Canada's current bell banger will keep his $60,000 a year job, however, and has since been relegated to other duties. He will spend the next two years practicing his trade on a toy version of the instrument. When asked why taxpayers are paying 60 grand a year for a guy to sit in a room and bang on a tin toy, the Prime Minister's office was quick to respond. Prime Minister Jean Chrétien has said that there are a million civil servants in the naked city, and a lone bell banger getting paid to sit in a room and play with himself is just one of them. Last week, 60s bombshell Bridget Bardot said she would sue village officials if they went ahead with their planned pigeon shoot in Toulouse, France. To demonstrate her views, Bardot chained herself to several of the birds, spray-painted them green, and then threw herself on any pigeon threatened with a gun. <laughs> French officials are currently studying ways to dispose of dead, flat, green birds. John Labatt Limited has introduced two versions of a dark ale called Copper X and Copper Y. They are asking ale drinkers to vote on which one they like better by calling a 1-800 number. We talk now to one of the voters. Welcome, Mr. Roach. 
Mr. Roach, you've tested both ales. Which is superior? Which do you like better, copper X or copper Y? Y. You like copper Y better? Is it because you like the taste? Why? Yes, we heard you. The copper Y was your overall choice, but what distinguishes it from brand X? Why? Why are you asking me all the questions, Frank? <laughs> a 22-minute exclusive beer still sweeping the nation. Good night. Okay, Frank. Okay. Good Good night. Sign off. Sign off. Who, who am I? Indian test pattern. people lined up in freezing cold weather in order to apply for jobs at the General Motors assembly plant in Pickering, Ontario last week. A 34-year-old man from Regina spent more than $1,100 on airfare in order to come to Pickering for a chance to get a job. I hope I get a job, he said. I really need the money. I have a wife, three kids, and a cable bill. <laughs> Mexico's stock market went into a tailspin recently. It was the biggest single plunge since the crash of 1987. On the trading floor, there was pandemonium. For more on the plunging peso, we talked to our foreign correspondent, Tim McMillan. Hello, Tim. Hello! Tim, are you in Mexico? Yes! Incredible. Well, I got to the Mexican Stock Exchange, and it was pretty exciting. A lot of people pushing and shoving, and the next thing you know, I was kind of shoved out onto the stock market floor, and everybody was yelling and waving their arms around, and it seemed like a lot of fun, so I just figured I'd join in. So I started waving my arms around and yelling out the little bit of Mexican that I know, peso, porco, fajita. Cut to the chase, Tim. Well, I think I might have started a bit of a panic on the floor. I think it might have been my hand gestures. Long story short, Tim. Well, I think I might have ended up devaluing the Mexican peso by around 40%, give or take five. But on the bright side, I did get a free drive out to the airport, and they figured the peso will eventually stabilize once I'm out of the country. Well, I gotta go now, Frank. I gotta unload my pesos at the duty-free shop for what they're worth. We'd like to take this time to apologize to the people of Mexico. We're very sorry about ruining your economy. It might be the middle of winter, but the fish are still biting. Here's this hour's very own Joe Crow. Bury my heart at wounded knee. Oh, Joe Crow here, eh? Ice fishing. Fixing to cook a traditional dinner of fish and side dish in support of my brothers and sisters camped out at the Revenue Canada Res in Toronto. I'm staying out here to show my solidarity and my good side, eh? In case there's a scout from north of 60 watching. Suggested plot line, a handsome stranger comes to town. The federal government has passed a law that might tax status Indians working off the res. And I know some of you pigmently challenged out there might think, why not? Well, there's just this one little otter testicle sized matter of treaty rights. The first peoples gave up sacred land in exchange for, among other things, exemption from the queen's tax. And the way I see it, if you make a deal with the nation, well, like my mother always said about the garbage, Carry it out, eh? <laughs> Until next time, this is Joe Crow saying, dress in layers, stick to earth tones, and skidoo careful, eh? And to my native brothers and sisters in the struggle for justice, well, like the little kitten in the calendar would say, hang in there, baby. <laughs> oh, what's so bad? Such teeth, dear.
We go now to the home of the Quint family, who called in earlier today to report that they are holding the winning ticket in the Lotto 649 jackpot draw. The Quints stand to collect a total of $10 million, making each of them a genuine Canadian millionaire. Hello, Quints. Well, let's put it this way. We're, We're in the money! Yep, okay, well, yay. congratulations on your newfound fortune. It must feel great. Oh, yeah, it's great. Uh, we're going to put uh, a few hundred right into RSVPs. Yeah. <laughs> we want people to think of us as Flanders, too, so we're going to give lots of charity, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Save the PLO, and uh, <laughs> we're going to give a big whack of it to the nuns. Yeah, because uh, they're after giving us enough whacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, OK, OK, but... When, when you actually purchased the ticket, did you ever think that you'd be holding such a big winner? Uh, well, uh, you know, we already uh, won a big case of motor oil there for uh, <laughs> correctly identifying who sung the song Snowbird. Balls and Murray! Right! 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 Oh, well, right. you must be very happy then. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah, you, did you ever see that ad there where, like, Buddy wins Lotto and then he's, like, jumping around like a skull dog, right? That's all. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was like that. It was like that ad where uh, Mom got to go to work, right? And yeah. Dad got to cook supper and all the kids are, yeah. are right, uh, upset about it, right? But then Dad comes around the corner with a big bucket of chicken. Yeah! yeah! It was like that! Yeah. Or, like, when Mrs. gets that downy freshness into her towel. Yeah! <laughs> Right on. Will any of you be keeping your old jobs? Jobs? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be keeping our old jobs, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, jobs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, could I see this ticket? Well, it's against our lawyer, Alan Eagleson's advice, yeah. but... It actually seems like that ticket has been altered. No, I don't think so. Well, it definitely looks like it's altered, although you do have four winning numbers anyway, so you're not complete losers, and by my calculations, you have won $10 split four ways. Four bucks each! Four bucks each! Good night. Sandy Campbell with this week's edition of The Campbell File. Hi, I'm Sandy Campbell, and I'll tell you what's crazy. A Cocker Spaniel in Ottawa stole a car and slammed it to the front of an antique store. The 14-year-old dog was unhurt but shaken and led from the car muttering, No one understands me, man. No one. 62% <laughs> of Canadians say they never think of having sex with a stranger. Oh, come on. Are you saying you know the friendly giant? Yeah! How about that? That 700-pound man who lost 40 pounds, that put a spring in his step, I'll tell you. Of course, there already was a spring in his step. That's the only way he could get around. <laughs> How about that lady who went to jail for killing her husband in a fight over who loved the other more? I guess she did. <laughs> a guy in British Columbia walked into a drugstore last week and said he'd be back in a half an hour to rob the place. Warning people before you rob them? Sounds like Revenue Canada. <laughs> You talk about crazy. A new study says that Catholics score higher in the area of sexual playfulness than non-Catholics. Well, I guess Pop and I have had playful sex. Playful? Heck, funny! <laughs> I just never find sex with Hub that... Oh, what's a word Masters and Johnson would use? Good! <laughs> Hub is one of those people who think that sex is like doing the dishes. If you do it badly enough, you won't be asked to do it again. <laughs> I'm Sandy Campbell, and this has been The Campbell File. <laughs> It has been revealed that the federal government is planning to raise the age of old age pension eligibility by two years. Canadians will now have to wait until the age of 67 to receive benefits. Under the new plan, the average Canadian male who lives to the age of 71 will pay into the plan for 50 years and collect for four. 
In a related story, it has been revealed that the same department has paid out over $8 million in old age pensions to dead people since 1988. The federal government has assured pensioners that the new cost-saving measures will not affect any dead people who are already receiving checks. The United States has offered $600 million in aid to South Africa, more than any other foreign investor. So it came as an embarrassment to U.S. officials when South African President Nelson Mandela referred to the assistance as peanuts. Mandela said if the Americans would be willing to dip the $600 million in chocolate, he would then be willing to call it glossettes. <laughs> The CBC and the BBC have announced plans to co-produce a six-hour documentary on the history of visual news. The film will run as a series next year with the title Dawn of the Eye. This is not to be mistaken for CBC's 19-hour look at the Senate entitled Dawn of the Living Dead. <laughs> Well, that's the way we saw the world this week. For all of us here at This Hour Has 22 Minutes, I'm Sidney Jabizinchik saying, for those of you who can't remember, the object of the game is to put the puck in your opponent's net and to keep doing it until the news comes on. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. This is J.B. Nixon on location here at one government place as we wait for Prime Minister Jean Chrétien to arrive. We are here now. Things were a little out of control. As we arrived, a large RCMP German Shepherd attacked our sound man and actually ate the pocket out of his CBC parka. I don't know what that's about. They've taken him away. Luckily, a bystander has stepped in and agreed to do sound. Actually, Mom, could you just keep the boom a little higher? Thanks very much. Excuse me, J.B. Dixon, this hour has 22 minutes. Is this what the Prime Minister will actually be eating today? The official... Yep, Prime Minister. Can we just take a, a little look there, maybe, at the Prime Minister's food? There's a bit of... Uh, I see some shrimp there. And, uh, and how many plates of food are there? There's three? Five plates? Yeah. And who else will be dining with the Prime Minister? I'm not quite sure. Top now, secret. If we wired you with the microphone, would you go <laughs> in the room and broadcast what was said in the meeting? Prime Minister Kretchen! Pr Prime, Minist Prime Minister Kretchen! Prime Minister Kretchen! Uh, Oh, sorry, I thought you were the Prime Minister of Canada, sorry. A miracle has happened. The RCMP have parted the sea of journalists. And as you see, a walkway has been created for the Prime Minister. Uh, there is no red carpet, actually. There's more, uh, more of a uh, kind of salt and sand residue, as you see. So hopefully he's wearing something rubber on his feet, or otherwise you get these, these kind of ugly salt stains that you, that you see there. And, of course, that's a problem for all Canadians, even the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Kretchen, J.B. Dixon, this hour has 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dick J.B. Dixon, this hour has 20 minutes. Dick J.B. Dixon, 22 minutes. <laughs>